Our next guest spent four years in an Egyptian prison as punishment for being an Islamist extremist. Since then, he has announced those politics. He is now fighting extremism, so taking the other end. Majin Nawaz is joining us. He is the co-founder of the UK-sponsored think tank, Quilliam, and he is with us from London. Majin, thanks so much for being with us. The, the reign of Egypt's Mubarak collapsed on the anniversary of the Iranian Revolution. Uh, how likely is it that Egypt becomes more like Turkey? How likely is it that it becomes more like Iran? So the irony of the occasion uh, isn't lost on anybody. I think it's a, a, a strong irony, and you're right to begin with this question. Egypt uh, doesn't have a Khomeini-like figure to take over or hijack this revolution. The Muslim Brotherhood's leader, Dr. Mohammed Badia, one of my former cellmates, um, ha has nowhere near the national standing that, uh, that Khomeini had in Iran, um, and he's not a unifying national figure for the Egyptian people to unite behind. A recent poll was conducted, by, supervised by the Washington Institute in D.C., and, and, and in their poll they found that the Muslim Brotherhood uh, only gained 1% uh, when questioned as to whether their leader should be president, whereas Amr Musa, a secular uh, Arab leader, uh, gained, uh, he, he won in that poll as to you know, people wanting him to be president. And I think that we also must keep in mind the role of Egypt's army. Egypt's army is closer to the Turkish model than it is to anything else. They are weary of Islamism. They are weary of an extremist takeover. They will act as the guardians of the constitution and they're currently in charge. So they will make sure that whatever process is put in place over the next six months, considering the elections, and there must be elections, and I think there will be elections, uh, the army will make sure that the uh, democratic character of Egypt is not hijacked by uh, extremists. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic. I think we have to be careful. I think we uh, mustn't be complacent, uh, but at the same time we mustn't be alarmist. And I think um, a piece which uh, I think I, I, that's coming out in the Wall Street Journal that I've been asked to write uh, actually advises this very point, that we must co go down the middle line remain careful, but at the same time, optimistic. Well, Majin, the, the army doesn't have to just safeguard the Constitution. They also have to revise it. That's what they promise to do for the next six months. How, in your judgment, how equipped are they to do that? The chairman of the High Military Council is 74 years old, the, the, the Field Marshal Tantawi. He was trained in the Soviet Union, not in the United States. Is he equipped to revise this Constitution? No, they're not equipped. They're, they're only equipped to supervise the revision. And I think the revision itself must be done by the civil society leaders. Egypt has uh, many, it has plenty of constitutional experts. In fact, the man responsible for writing the godfather of the entire Arab world's constitutions uh, originally was an Egyptian. I mean, they have that expertise inside Egypt. What they need to do now, and this is really where their uh, real challenge is, is that the, uh, the, the opposition groups that are, have up until now been uh, very, very disunited, and even this revolution actually wasn't sparked by them. It was actually sparked by the disorganized majority of the youth, the youth bulge, who didn't form the traditional opposition of Egypt. But the actual existing opposition, opposition groups need to, for once in their lives, get together. Uh, they need to select their various constitutional and legal experts and political experts and economic experts, and they all need to start cooperating. Now, there is hope. They have a committee of 10 wise men, but they need to go a lot further than that, and they need to actually uh, embark upon this program of revision, and the army's role should be to, to supervise that revision and to set in place uh, a timetable. Imagine I want to ask you to, to make a precision on one of your comments. You said that you are optimistic that Egypt can look more like Turkey than Iran. If you had to put it on such a, a crude measurement as a scale of 1 to 10, just how strong is your optimism that Egypt can find this middle road? Okay, that, that is very crude, but if I'm forced to answer that question, I would say that I'm looking at somewhere around 7 to 8. Um, and the reason for that is, again, Egypt's army is traditionally secular. Uh, it's not Islamist. It's actually very weary of uh, the Islamist influence, which is why they've kept them at bay for such a long time, even though they've been the most organized opposition. But the, again, important to note is that Egypt's most organized opposition did not organize Egypt's only people's revolt. And that gives us cause for optimism. Majin, thanks so much for the time. Majin Nawa is joining us there from London. Pleasure. He is the co-founder of Quilliam. It is a UK-sponsored think tank.